Okay, this would probably be my mom's favorite thing because she loves hummingbirds and she has a hummingbird feeder, feeder in her backyard, just saying. But this is the June-July issue, uh, Birds in Bloom. And I get this magazine um, because it reminds me of my grandma. She always loved the birds. And um, we're going to go through the pages marked here really quick. Of course, it's hummingbird time. The author, is, or the author, the uh, editor in chief, is telling us, executive director, I should say, uh, Kristen Schrader. And several months ago, I wrote the foreword for the Hummingbird Handbook, a book we partnered with for auth author John Shuey and Timber Press to bring you. To prepare, I reflected on the thousand of amazing. Uh, snapshots and the stories that have crossed my desk over the years. Epic hummingbird happenings from the elated bird watchers across the country when it has never been the more clear to me that there were fast flying little gems that looked more emotion, joy, excitement than the other birds. The Hummingbird Handbook is truly a complete guide to everything you've ever wanted to know about these beloved flyers. Get a short snippet of the book and Hummingbird Hot Topics on page 40. Also in this issue, indulge in four, 14 awe-inspiring photos taken by the backyard bird watchers like you and the Hummingbird Tales on page 24. To capture beautiful photo like those, you must create a Haven Hummingbird Love and we can help. Love them in the feeding tips, backyard sweet story on page 10. Learn which nectar-packed flowers keep them coming back for more. In the shadow on page 12, find out how to garden for them even in the smallest areas. The tiny spaces are big rewards, page 34. As always, feel free to share your own tales and photos with us at birdsandblooms.com backslash schmidt. After all, hummingbird sightings are meant to be shared and celebrated. Kristen Schrader, the editor. Okay. I liked this article here about waterworks. Growing healthy and abundant container plants start with simple irrigation tips by Lori Vanover. Okay, every garden needs water to thrive, especially if the garden in, is in container based, where you're dealing with a smaller amount of soil. Watering is vital for the plants to look their best, so don't overdo it though. Proper drainage is just as important as the amount of water added to the container, says Andrew. Holsinger, Extension University of Illinois Extension Horticulture Educator. Follow these tips to give your pot exactly the splash it needs. Be mindful of the soil type. Skip the garden soil containers because it won't drain properly. Look for potting mixes that include vermiculas or perlite to help drainage. Also remember the compost and occasional fertilizer will provide the nutrients plants need. Think big picture. Choose a container in which plants you want to grow a variety of pots will work for sprouting vegetables and herbs, but the size does matter. Some plants, like tomatoes, need more soil to accommodate the root system, so you go big. If you're reusing a vessel from last year, defect, disinfect it before planting. Always select a container with drainage holes at the bottom so the plants don't become too waterlogged. Which I'm wondering about my uh, thing out back. The um, I can't even think of what it is. That um, raised water bed, water bed, basically, yeah, flower bed. Be materialistic. Pay attention to the material from which your container is made. Non-porous and prosperous types will affect the soil's moisture level. Potting mix in clay, fabric, and unglazed ceramic containers will dry out more quickly than in plastic or glazed pots, so you will need to water the plants more frequently. Set a watering schedule. Make sure that your pots or daily make most plants need to be watered when the top few inches are soiled or dry don't wait until the soil is completely dry use a moisture probe or estimate by the feel of the soil the container will also become noticeably lighter as it dries out water thoroughly until the water drains out of the bottom consider autopilot for the busy gardeners there are automatic watering solutions available self-watering containers include a reservoir of water to help quench the plants thirst and drip irrigation systems. Um, timers provide just the right amount of water to the container plants need when needed. Make friends with mulch. Limit how much and 
how often you need to water by mulching the top of the container. Mulch is an effective tool for reducing evaporation, even in the containers, Andrew says. Add a few inches for the best water saving result. A pot of kaloches, diota, and fountain grass is in verbenina. That is pretty, except for that green stuff in the middle. I think that's too overbearing. Okay, sugar water feeder 101. Find the shade. Hang the feeders in the shadier spots to discourage the bees from taking over as they prefer sunny locations. Choose wisely when selecting a feeder. Pick one with a wide opening to make cleaning easy. Scrub it once every few days, more often in the hot weather. Three, consider purchase. Purchase a feeder with purchase to give the hummers opportunity for a brief rest. But keep in mind that Orioles also love Sugar Lover too, and they may stop by too. Four, go bold. Look for the red hummingbirds that are particularly drawn to the color, so choose a feeder with red features to draw extra attention, like that one, see. Block bugs. Certain insects, like yellow jackets and ants, are drawn to sugar water to keep them at bay, so install a nectar guard tips on the ant moats. Six, avoid the dye. Though hummingbirds are attracted to red and clear sugar waters just to find, skip the red dye and the birds will still find your feeder. And it says that was by Molly Jacksini, that article. We move to the next article. Okay. Which is, what's your best hummingbird photography tip? Shutterbird readers are sharing your best advice for taking pictures of these speedy birds across the fence. Wear red. Hummingbirds are really drawn to that color. Whether you're wearing it yourself or on a, it's on the flower, I carry a red umbrella to stay out of the sun, wear my brightest red shirt and sit in front of my Xenia garden and have my camera ready. Mary Sullivan from or Deland, Minnesota. I will put out feeders with perches on them. The birds will stop long enough for me to snap a picture. Mary Clark from Manatee, Mississippi. Patience, lots and lots of patience from Susan Chilkowski Kane from Marlton, New Jersey. It says the ruby-throated hummingbird at the pink saliva. Open your camera's aperture all the way and focus manually while you take dozens of photos. Vincent Dexler from Canal Fountain, Ohio. Okay, up there we see Anna's hummingbird. It says, sit and watch the hummers. They'll get used to be you being there. Then you can sit all day snapping away to your heart's content. Jackie Taylor from Hubert, North Carolina. I set my camera up on a tripod. A few feet from my feeder, I focus the shot, attach a remote control shutter. Then I have a seat. Rather than watching the feeder through the viewfinder the whole time, I listen for the noises made by the bird's wings. Billy Walker from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And it says, your turn. What fall garden chore do you never skip? Share your answer with us at birdsandbloom.com backslash submit. And I think we got one more. Yep. Look at the lavender. Grow your f field of knowledge about the soothing herb by Kelly Elgin. Did you know? 260. One of the world's largest privately owned lavender farms in Australia, Bryden Town Lavender Estate, with 260, a blooming purple beauty. 8. Depending on the species and season, lavender may bloom for up to 8 weeks. 7. The, these aramic plants need well draining and neutral soil with a pH of about 7, which mimics their native Mediterranean habitat. The bumblebee on the lavender is there. And then we see one-fourth English lavender may, might produce only one-fourth teaspoon of lavender oil per pound of the flower heads. Luckily, there are other lavender species that cultivars produce much more. 450 is a large lavender is a part of the mint family that boasts more than 450 varieties found throughout the world. 12. Space lavender plants at least 12 inches apart when planning to give beautiful wand-like blooms space to thrive. 6. To truly flourish, lavender needs to be at least 6 hours in the sun per day. Longer is even better. That is beautiful though, isn't it? Just look at that lavender field. Okay, well, that concludes my sharing of birds in bloom with you. Oh, we got to have the back of a beautiful cover here. It says, nature is painting for us the day after day. Pictures of the infinite beauty by John Ruskin. That is very nice. It says, Anna's hummingbird of the pride of Madeira blooms. Wow. 
just stunning. Okay, well, we're going to try and get through one more magazine. So tomorrow night, when we do the first magazine, we can hit every fine point before I have to deliver those on Saturday, which is the best news ever.